The purpose of the training today is to help the manager who is working in a global environment to get the most out of his team members. These team members may be virtual or they may be face to face. To help us do that, we have three training objectives. And these objectives are designed to enhance understanding of one, how values affect the communication process, and two, the impact of perception on the communication process, and then three, general cultural values and how those get played out and impact the, the uh, communication process as well. A brief note on the general cultural values. As we go through this, it's important not to assume that all members of a given culture have the same values. They may have very diverse values and these become different in behaviors as well. There are also several filters that may change a person's cultural values as well, such as their background of experience and education level. And also just as importantly is the corporate culture. How universal is the corporate culture? And that remains to be seen. But by staying observant, one can be able to determine the behaviors and what values those behaviors are connected to. And to help us do that, let's take a look at the iceberg model. I'm sure you've seen this before, but in this situation, what we have here is a blue wavy line, and this is repre meant to represent the water line. This green line that goes up here and then on the, to the other side is meant to represent the iceberg. And with that, you notice just a tiny amount of the iceberg is showing. And above the water line on the top with the iceberg is the behaviors. All behaviors that we exhibit are communicated or communication. And this communication is either verbal or nonverbal. And when we show this communication, the receiver of that communication is going to have a perception. And that perception is going to be based upon that individual's values. And there, according to cultural anthropologists, there are different values and the dichotomies that may go, uh, may be the opposites of each value. It's important to understand that as we list and explain these values, that these values do not act in isolation. One set of values is going to work with another set of values to create a behavior. And it's not as complicated as that sounds. It just takes a little bit of practice, and that's what we're going to work on as well. We also want to be aware of reactions to the communication that we've just heard or received. And to help us do that, I think you've all got a, a, a cultural quandary, quandary here, and this is just a critical incident. It's a very simple uh, business situation that I'm sure you're all familiar with, and I'm going to read it as you read along. It starts out with, Mr. Smith is walking by Varun's cube and begins a conversation concerning a project he is working on with other members of the team. Mr. Smith says, so Varun, do you think you will use the new process that was outlined in the meeting yesterday for the next set of data? Vroon hesitates and smiles and replies, oh, yes, Mr. Smith, I should be able to. Mr. Smith says, great, I look forward to seeing the results. When do you think you might get have them? I want us to push up the timeline for a completion if possible. Vroon unsure says, okay, when should, Mr. Smith says, Vroon, I leave that up to you, but the sooner the better. The team is counting on your results. Varun silent. How about the end of the week? Mr. Smith looks questioning at Varun. If that's what you think. Early next week, Mr. Smith stops in Varun's cube again. Mr. Smith, he's slightly irritated, says, Varun, where is that report you promised me last week? Varun hands him the report. Mr. Smith glances through the report, then looks frustrated. Varun, this is incomplete. I don't see anything regarding the new process. What is going on? And so as I mentioned at the beginning before I read this, we have behaviors that are communicated. And the first thing that's going on is that Mr. Smith asks a very direct question. 
are you going to be new, using the new processes? That value is direct. In someone or cultures that value the direct side of communicating, that means they're comfortable with differences of opinion and that most of the message is in the word. The opposite side is what Varun is. He's on the indirect side of communication, meaning he's not as comfortable with differences put so bluntly in words. He, in fact, uses a hesitation and a smile to show that he's not sure what he's going to do. And he may be looking to Mr. Smith for direction to see what might be okay, but he doesn't receive any. So, again, to define directness, it's being comfortable with confrontation or disagreement or differences of opinion. And the underlying premise of directness is truth and honesty. You tell me what you need, I'll get it to you. You tell me what you're thinking, you tell me what the problem is, we'll take care of it. The underlying premise of indirect communication styles is harmony. We need to have a good relationship so that we can go forward. And so indirectness is used. And Varun was expecting to have his smile and hesitation read, but it was not. The other part that is included with this communication process is what we call high context and low context. For the U.S. side, and including Mr. Smith's personal style, he is low context, meaning the message is in the word. The context is the situation in which the conversation is taking place. So with the opposite of high context, that's reading more of the nonverbals and the situational cues that are going along with the message. Most Americans screen that out. Other cultures read those. And that's what Varun is doing. He was hoping, again, for his smile to be read, but it was not. So, Mr. Smith replies in a very direct manner that he's positive that these new um, processes will be used and wants to push forward a time frame. Now, the next thing that happens is Varun is unsure about what time to give Mr. Smith when Mr. Smith, again, directly asks for the time. In Varun's point of view, it is not his job to set the time frame. He, it's not his job to prioritize. That is the manager's job. In his opinion, his job is to get the work done that the manager requests. So the structure from which Varun is coming from is saying that your job is to make the decisions. My job is to do what you asked for. But Mr. Smith's side, and again this reflects some of the U.S. side, says that with flexibility is, hey, you're in the best situation to make this decision, so I, and I trust you, so tell me what you're thinking. How much time are you going to need to do this? We've never done this before, so tell me what you think. Varun would rather have the structure and be told what it was, even if it's in a direct fashion. The, this two needs, flexibility and structure, can play into this next value dichotomy, which is equality versus hierarchy. And it's careful when you listen to the definitions here, because it's not just uses of title or positional um, authority. It gets into a little bit more than that. From the U.S. side, we parent children to be very... Um, empowered and to initiate behaviors if they think it's going to get something done that the parents want done. We err on the side of equality. Other cultures err on the side of a hierarchy. Hierarchy is positional, it is predictive, and it sets a comfort level for those who are use that as a, stru as a structured guide to social behavior. So you see how structure and hierarchy go hand in hand in here. With equality, when it doesn't depend on position or age, there's flexibility built in. It could be gender, it could be all sorts of differences, but flexibility is built into the lens in which we perceive these things. 
Now the next thing that's going on, because Vroom was not comfortable making this time commitment, it became fluid in his eyes. Meaning, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how long this is going to take. So if I tell you a time, you will understand that it could be flexible because in our culture, time is not seen as something that is scripted. You don't control time. In the U.S. sense of things, especially in the north part of the United States, time is fixed. We expect to control time. Other cultures, time is fluid. Time is um, not a commodity. Where time is fluid, the emphasis is on the relationship. Where usually time is fixed, usually the emphasis is on getting the job done. So, a fluid sense of times means that deadlines and other things can be pushed back. And the notion of being late or tardy is relative relative to what is the norm in the country. And you will hear about different countries having different notions of what is late, what is on time, what is expected. You will even hear that in the United States. Now, what's going on here as well, and one of the overriding things here is that Americans, including Mr. Smith, emphasize the role of the individual, even in team situations. Again, think back to the schooling you've, you've received, to the, if you're from the United States, the schooling you received, how your parents uh, reinforced certain privileges or took them away based on how you acted as an individual. In other countries, it's all based on the collective. It's based on the group situation. And notice that a collective group may have a hierarchy and a structure involved. And that means if you have this emphasis on the group, time becomes more fluid because you can't control it. You have to see what the norms of the group want as you go along. So with Mr. Smith, he's expecting an individualistic direct answer from Varun saying, yes, I am comfortable. No, I'm not comfortable with the new processes. He's expected Varun to tell him when the time um, line will be, and if there's going to be any problems going forward, he expects Varun to tell him as well. All of these things may go against the collective norm, and there will be other indicators of how these decisions are made and, and what are the possible fallbacks. Every culture has their way of ga gauging these things according to behaviors and values as they go along. Now, if we step away from this cultural quandary for just a second, I think what's important to realize is that the reaction of each one of these guys, from Mr. Smith to Varun, is based on their own values, as I said earlier. But the perception may be, from Mr. Smith's opinion, is that Varun, he cannot set a timeline. He told me he could do something, and it doesn't appear from this report that he can. So and he's not comfortable because he hesitates and he's, he's not direct with me. So I don't know if he's trustworthy, but most importantly, I don't know if he's even competent. So that's the underlying assumption that happens when you have different values at play here is one person views the other as not trustworthy. Now from Varun's perception, think about it. If the director is being, uh, or the manager, Mr. Smith, is being too direct in his communication style. He's asking him to set the time frame and do the things that normally a manager should be doing. Then Vroon is probably thinking, well, then what's wrong? Why is Mr. Smith, who should be making these decisions for me, why is he putting me out there on a limb? I'm not comfortable with this. So again, he's judging or gauging Mr. Smith as not comf competent to be a manager because he's not doing his job. And if Mr. Smith's not making decisions, then what is he doing besides making Varun very uncomfortable? That's the upshot of very simple inner office behavior. It's all based upon the values. And the values, as compared to this uh, iceberg analogy, the values 
are what drives motivation, thus behavior. So the key then here is, as you're probably thinking, is so what do you do about it? And what about the cultures that I am interacting with? What are their values and what are their behaviors compared to what ours are? Well, those are things we're going to address in the next section of this training. We will take a look at, one, what are your own personal styles of working, how your values become workplace behavior, and two, what are the, the possible norms of your colleagues who may be working in various countries.